Hello everybody, this is Suzanne Connors Inc. from Dawning Visions Hypnosis. And today, on the video for Disappearing Type 2 Diabetes, we're going to talk about something that I don't believe many people talk about at all. And is a very, very important component in understanding the physio physiology of the body. And that has to do with calories and how calories work or don't work in the body. So here's a brief educational piece to teach you all about this. Because the first thing that I need you to understand is type 2 diabetic, your doctor's going to tell you to lose weight. However, calories have nothing to do with losing weight. Zil, zilch, nothing. And I'm going to explain why. You can determine how much energy is in any given food. This is true. And that number is known as calories. Okay? But the body doesn't have any receptors for calories. If you drink cola, it has a certain amount of calories. If you have a drink, Diet Coke, that has zero calories. But the body has no receptors for knowing that, so it doesn't have any way of responding to it. Now, interestingly enough, the only reason that we think this is an important concept is because it's been ingrained in us, but it's not physiologically based. If you put 100 calories of sugar in your mouth versus 100 calories of olive oil, the physiological response is totally different. You put that oil into your mouth and drink it down, you have a zero insulin response. Nothing. But if you put a brownie in your mouth with a ton of sugar, the same amount of calories, the insulin spikes right up. Your body is responding to the hormones. Your insulin, your leptin, your ghrelin, thyroid, everything. That's how your body knows what to do. So when you're taking in carbohydrates, insulin goes up. If your body is sensing that protein is what you're eating, the insulin will not go up. And the same is to be said for fat. Zero insulin response to fat. So you have different receptors for your amino acids, which is what proteins are made of. You have different receptors for fat. So with fat, you have cytine release. With carbohydrates, you'll have stretch receptors in your stomach that will be activated to allow you to know that you've eaten enough and you can stop eating. You'll feel full, satiated. So they all have different things that your body responds to, but calories is not among them. Therefore, your body has no idea about calories. Now, interestingly enough, you can go on Google and find tons of diagrams regarding digestion with Krebs cycle, acetylcholine, amino acids. But in the last 500 years of physiology, nowhere are calorie receptors ever described. And that's because they don't exist. This concept was borrowed from physics, which made a little sense, but not much. With the endless repetition, people believe that it's true. And as a hypnotist, I'm going to tell you that the way young kids learn is through repetition, right? It's the way they learn their alphabets, the way they learn their multiplication tables. It's the way they even learn their chemistry tables. If you learn a foreign language, same idea. Over and over and over again until you learn it. So if you're told the same message over again, you got to watch your calories, guess what happens? You believe it, even though it has no basis in science. So, with the endless repetition, people believe that 100 calories of broccoli is the same as 100 calories of donuts, but it's not. But we try to pretend that it is, but it's not. And that's where we fail terribly. If you feel that matters, that calories matter, all you need to do is switch over to Diet Coke and eat cholesterol, which is fake fat. Eat food with zero calories. 
We've done this for 30 years, and I want you to notice how fat people have gotten as a result of eating those low-calorie, no-fat diets. We're following the wrong path being so obsessed with calories. The minute you understand that 100 calories of kale is different from 100 calories of donuts, once it enters your mouth, you realize that we're dealing with the wrong issue with calories. And I want you to understand it's all driven by the food industry because they want to sell all that crap to you. All their hot sodas with their fake sugar substitutes, all their non-fat foods with their fake fats that go through your bodies and whatever, however they advertise it. Your body doesn't know what to do with these things. It gets very confused and it's really, really bad for you. And I can tell you for a fact that every single fake sugar out there is a toxin. So if you're having any kind of uh, irritability or inflammatory problems, knock out that stuff and see if that doesn't help you. I bet you it will. All you need to understand is that 200 calories of donuts is a much cheaper than taking 200 calories of salmon in your pocket. However, the 200 calories of salmon is going to help you to build the amino acids, or actually to build the hormones from the amino amino acids that you need in order to make your body function correctly. It also has the fish oils, the omega-3s, which you need for so many processes. It's just very, very important. Another thing that I learned earlier today was that even if you eat food and you exercise, you're only going to be able to exercise off about 10 to 30 percent of it. So exercise is not the answer for weight loss. It isn't. Exercise is important for your mood stabilization. It's important for you to be able to move your body because if you stop moving your body, you won't be able to move it too well anymore. Just ask some of the older people who were sitting on their couches eating those donuts and pizzas. What happened to their bodies over the years? You don't want to know. Got to move it. Got to keep the synovial fluid running through your joints to keep your joints active and able to be lubricated to do their jobs. You need to move your body to get your lymph system moving because it doesn't have a pump like the heart to get all the toxins out through your lymph system. And you produce a lot of endorphins and serotonin that makes you feel happy. The runner's high, you know. So this is what's very important for you to take away. We have a set point in our body that determines how fat we get. If you get too fat, you won't survive. And if you're not able to have enough fat on your body in the meantime, so you can't have food, you won't survive either. So we have a set point. So we want to be mindful of that idea. We want to eat whole foods. When item foods, you go into that grocery store, you stay around the outside perimeter of the grocery store. Stay away from all the crap inside unless you're getting some olive oil or coconut oil to cook with with some green tea that's also good for you, or flaxseed, or chia seeds, or things of this nature, healthy stuff. Those things are usually found on the inside. But other than that, you want real fruits, real vegetables, as fresh as you can get them. Organic if you can afford it. You don't need all that GMO shit. Think about GMOs. GMOs were made so that the plant would be able to survive the pesticides and herbicides. Do you really want that crap in your body? Uh, probably not. So be careful with the type of food that you're buying. Buy grass-fed meats when you can. I know they're kind of expensive, but you only need three ounces every few days. You know? It's not that much, really. And they have all the B vitamins that you need. It's very important. If you don't have enough B vitamins, you're going to find yourself having a lot of problems, especially neurological type issues. So you need your B vitamins. You need the B12 that you get from meat. There's no other way to get it unless you get it in some kind of, I don't know, I don't know if it's prescribed or, no, you might be able to get it in the drugstore, I don't know. But the preferred method that people always had was to get their vitamins and minerals through the food that they eat like every other organism on the planet Earth. That's right. There's a diet. It's appropriate. There's a type 2 
diabetic or someone with metabolic syndrome, fewer carbs, much, much fewer carbs. Berries are really good. They don't have that many calories and they're pretty low in the glycemic index stuff, but fats are good. They're satiating. They don't push up your insulin levels. Just make sure they're healthy fats. Avocados, coconut oil, olive oil. It's better to cook with coconut oil. Use olive oil for dressings. It loses a lot of its nutrients when you heat it up. You know, it just tastes good. Nuts and seeds. All really good for you. Fish. Fatty fish for the omega-3s, like I said before. And complex carbohydrates, people. Whole grains. Go with quinoa, which is pretty easy to cook, actually. It takes like 20 minutes, I think, to cook up. You just got to watch it. And brown rice, you know, you want the whole thing. You don't want the fiber taken away. You don't want the proteins taken out of it. You want the whole grain there if you're going to eat grain, all right? But not too much of it. But if you have actually the whole thing, it's much more satiating and healthier for you as well. So that is the message for today's video. Hope you learned something. Until next time.